photographers over the ages, across time, across generations, encounter each other. There is an encounter with the image, which is always ongoing. And I have some slides to show that to you and how that happens. Uh, one of the uh, images that I took was of a, a wall, a factory wall. I showed it to George, and he grabbed it and said, you got to tell me where this is, because you know, he wanted to go and photograph it. But that's an ongoing moment, you know, in a sense. It really is. It goes back and forth. And one day it struck me, when, and I've looked at all his photographs, and I've studied them, and that there's a kind of longing in them for the father. There's a, there's a kind of paternal feeling. And it's because his father, later in life, when he got to meet his father, his father showed him his photo albums. And so the young George Tice tried to connect with his father through those photo albums in terms of books, creating books of photography. He doesn't shoot pictures. He shoots a book. And so he tried to connect the man, man the city, and nature. Those three themes. Into that. And it took him five years of shooting until he gets what he thinks he needs. And he'll start with maybe 30 images. And that's the beginning of a book. But that's how he thinks in terms of a book. Uh, next image. There's the young George Tice. I guess he's, uh, yeah, he's probably 30s. I yeah. can't believe it's 75. It's the 75th anniversary. Uh, it's, um, he's had a long, long career as a photographer. He started very young. He started the year I was born, 1953, is when he started in photography. Um, so he's been doing this stuff for 60 years. Uh, he's always writing. Um, he's got a loop. You know, he needs the loop to look into the back of the ground glass. He's checking the focus. You know. uh, he's shooting because he's shooting. Um, he's got to use a long shutter because he's got a, a very small aperture and he's trying. You know, so the camera can't move. There have been days I went out with him. It was just too windy. We couldn't take a shot. But even if you waited down the, the tripod, it was just too windy for the two camera. But that's what he uses. He's always writing. And he's got all these day books. Um, he keeps notes to himself about where he was, when, when it was, uh, what he was shooting, uh, the names of things. He wants to get everything accurate. He's, he's very detailed. One of the things that Tice picked up on is something I told him. And you know, because I've been living in Patterson for a number of years, and what I noticed about Patterson when I walked around was that if you looked up, you could see the 19th century. It existed on the second, third floors of all the old buildings. And then if you look you know, at street level, you were dealing with the, the present. And so Tice liked that concept of the past being in the upper floors and the present being down below. And so he made these triptychs. And this, this is one of the triptychs. And it's just to show that relationship of, of the old, the past, and, and what's, you know, what's present back and forth. Remember I told you the ongoing moment is about photographers encountering each other, and they encounter each other through each other's images? Well, this is one of those encounters. In 1938, Dorothea Lang, in the Great Depression, headed out west. And in New Mexico, she took this photograph. Right, you go to the next slide. Um, 1955. Yeah. A generation later, Robert Frank is going out west to document America. He takes this. This is the ongoing moment. This is it. Uh, George Tice from Stonewall's Gray Skies, from uh, his Yorkshire photographs. So, you know, an encounter. It's an ongoing moment. Anytime you see this image, that's it. I mean, photographers are going to keep taking this image. You're going to keep taking If you're a photographer, you're going to take this image. It's going to happen. So there it is. You know, one generation to the next, you know, from Dorothy Lang to Robert Frank to George Tice. It's, it goes on. Pettit's Mobile Station. This is George Tice's most famous photograph. Um, it implies the road because it's a gas station and there's a car, although you don't see the highway. There's no road. Uh, Robert Frank would have shown you the highway. But, you know, but he shows you the car. 
And the car is sort of like, um, well, it symbolizes the road. It's like the, the deer head in a lodge. You know? There's an ongoing moment with this photograph. I studied this photograph. Uh, in fact, I've written an essay about it. I can read a section of it to you if I have time. I don't know how much time I have. There is something mysterious about the empty car parked by one of the three garage doors in George Tice's photograph. You don't know if the station is open or closed or if it is late night or early morning. There are no people visible, although you can see through the glass garage doors all the way to the racks of new tires shelved against the wall. There are two sets of gas pumps on separate islands. Their stainless steel bodies gleam in the overhead lights and make them appear like sentinels. The gas price sign on top of the pump reads 53.95. There's a poster displayed in the front office window that advertises snow tires, 23.95. Everything teeters on the edge of darkness. A water tower, just barely visible below the surface of the photograph, appears as if some alien craft had landed. It looks enormous as if it had been lurking beneath the night, weighed down by all that darkness.